So I may have shown something like this before, but this is uh, this shows a couple of things. It's the uh, uh, that uh, rib and frame um, trim uh, assembly that I'm working on that uh, creates these sorts of uh, arrays of cutters that allow you to, to do these elaborate cutouts. Uh, we saw a couple of spheres the last time around, and I've taken it a little bit further with this one. And it also has a little peek at these, these little copper tubes here. I've been working on an assembly that creates um, tubing like this, uh, consisting of straight line segments and elbow joints. Um, and the elbow joints uh, simply appear anywhere on your polyline where you have a vertex. So you can just, uh, when it comes down to editing, you just have a polyline and you can just move the vertices around. Uh, or add vertices or remove vertices or all the things you would do with a polyline and it gets turned into this uh, sort of uh, tubing. And, and you have control over uh, these elbows. They can, they can be just completely uh, uniform, just the same you know, radius as the pipe and all that and just be smooth or they can be actual three-dimensional uh, things like you see here. They can be bigger. They can be you can actually get smaller at the elbows rather than bigger. Um, and, you know, all of that. Um, all right, so that's that. And then again, working with that rib and frame thing, I put together something a little silly, um, but had a lot of fun with it, uh, using that tool to create this structure to this, whatever this thing is, these sort of ribs. Um, and I will be working on uh, things that show you how all this stuff is done. This is going to be small on everybody's screen, but kind of gives you a little peek at the process of creating this model here, which really just started off with some uh, procedural boxes. I, I made them procedural so that the beveling of the boxes uh, and their shape could be independently uh, manipulated. So when you, when you manipulate the shape, the aspect ratio, the tapering, all that that I was doing with these boxes, uh, it doesn't, you know, uh, mess up the uh, degree of roundness or the quality of the roundness. Anyway, took those just a uh, just a few simple boxes, and this is one of those cutter uh, UV UV transformed onto a um, kind of cylindrical elliptical cylinder running, you know, left to right here, just to get the boxes in contact with those. Uh, just to get the cutter in contact with the boxes, and you get this sort of waffle-like pattern when you just first initiate something like that. But if you watched the video or saw any of my earlier demos, you know that this waffle pattern simply comes from a uh, a 2D plane that just has a grid on it. Uh, could have be could be any uh, arrangement of polygons, and absolutely any arrangement of polygons on a 2D plane. But in this case, I just started with a grid. And then, you know, just by moving the grid points around on that 2D plane, you can start to get more variety to this rib structure, start to change uh, the flow of the ribs. Um, and then one of the cool things about it is when you, you can almost see this better in the big image, when you bring in some new geometry like this sphere here, you know, the ribs are just there. They're just sort of there in three spaces. The, you know, the beauty of mesh fusion, you just have these cutters floating here in three space. So I was just able to bring in new geometry like this sphere and a cylinder here and the ribs just kind of wrap around it when you bring it in. Same thing ultimately with this capsule arrangement back here. And, uh, you know, from there, it's uh, pretty simple. I'll just fusion stuff with adding some details and fusing everything together and doing some cutters for things like this little hood arrangement here and uh, this door here that you might not be able to see too well in the dark part of the model there. And uh, yeah, that's about that. Here's a quick little render of some tests with the pipe. And if I'm courageous enough, I might even show you the pipe assembly here sort of in action. Um, so let's see. Um, let's see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you know you can obviously just move the vertices around in the in the elbows 
we'll we'll bend as required to to accommodate, and then you could do something like go to edge and add point and just drop in another one. A little bit around. And there are some there are some things to work out with this. There are some quirks. It, it's all based on the um, pen extrude tool, which I know there have been discussions. There are some problems that can occur with twisting, and when that happens here, some some bad things happen to the bevels, as you just saw there. The, the mesh gets twisted, and then all this beveling that's going on, which is creating the elbows, kind of goes nuts. But you know, it's it's not too bad. You can kind of figure out how to avoid it, and and maybe we'll get some of that twisting stuff sorted out. Uh, and make it a little more robust, but but generally it works, and you can get where you want to go. You just have to avoid those little trouble spots where it gets confused. All right, well that's about it. Very cool stuff. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to ask Daryl any questions directly, go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, a couple comments uh, coming in typed. Uh, Cindy says, "Nice models, Daryl." Um, Someone waiting for name. I don't know who that is yet. That might be Ed, because I don't see Ed in there elsewhere. <laughs> the fusion yeah, ribbing framing and tubing like stuff looks so cool. Uh, it sounds like an Ed thing, so to say. Um, and Greg Malik says, Daryl, have you thought about doing a for sale tutorial about creating? Uh, sorry. Sorry, go to meeting and the inability to click on things sometimes for me is crazy. Gerald, have you thought about doing a for sale tutorial about creating one of these cool objects from start to render? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I think I think I'm going to be pretty busy here over the next couple of months just doing you know straightforward tutorials just to help everybody be able to use these things. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't given anything like that. Up. A, a lot of thought. I mean, uh, you know, uh, maybe the two will overlap in in the sense that, uh, um, you know, there will maybe that maybe I'll be able to go deep enough with in sort of the how-to tutorials to uh, to to uh, supply the info needed. But yeah, I have thought about it. Just don't know if if and when I can get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, and and thanks, busy. thanks. For, oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the compliments, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, it's fun to get back and do a little modeling. Uh, something I have too little time for. I see this question about uh, the the piping elbows have unique materials. Yeah, I'm, I'm simply using the uh, the ability of the procedural beveling to assign materials to the beveled surfaces, and you know, just kind of throwing some little accents on the on the on the tubing. So. That was from Dan Ruby. He says, uh, awesome as well. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, 